All right, I'm here with Diane Ziaglio. She is the a Democrat running for state auditor. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Diana DiZoglio. It's a tough name. Sorry, uh, I, I tell screw people, that up. I screwed no, it up. No, no, I tell people, hey, I say just remember the Italian woman on the ballot when you go to vote because we actually, as third generation, we actually say the name uh, a little bit differently than it's supposed to be pronounced. It's supposed to be DiZoglio. We say DiZoglio. So however you want to pronounce it, well, I'm okay with Just remember... Uh, just remember what the name looks like when you go. It's uh, Desoglio, and I am a senator from the Merrimack Valley, running to be your next state auditor so that working families like ours can get access to and accountability from our state leaders and our state agencies, regardless of our family background, our bank balance, or our zip code. Uh, if, you mind, if you don't mind, I can share why I'm running beyond well, that. Well, I, I, I wanted to hear why you're running for a state auditor. State auditor is a very important position in the Commonwealth. A lot of voters don't know too much about it. Um, so why did you want to make this next step to state auditor? Look, I've been serving in the state legislature for 10 years now. A little bit about myself. I was born to a 17-year-old single mom, grew up housing insecure, moved around quite a bit between mostly Lawrence and Methuen, very similar to the Springfield area. I've been working with colleagues in the uh, legislature, such as Senator Adam Gomez, uh, Representative Jake Oliveira, Orlando Ramos, Carlos Gonzalez. Uh, whose support I have in this race alongside of Mayor Sarno, who's also endorsing me in this race, and, and Sheriff Kochi, who's endorsing. And they're endorsing me for a reason. It's because I've been working for the last 10 years in gateway cities and communities that have been disenfranchised uh, from what's happening up on Beacon Hill. And, you know, we know uh, that regional equity is a really big issue. And, you know, the former auditor, look, she did some great reporting on how places like Western Mass actually are not being treated fairly and equitably in cases such as transportation, uh, your regional school districts and regional school transportation, infrastructure, broadband. We have a lot of those same challenges when you come out to the Merrimack Valley area. And for the last 10 years, I've been fighting like hell to make sure that working families who are disenfranchised or isolated from a system in state government that's just not working for all of us the way that it could and should can have a voice. I've been legislating, advocating, calling for audits, demanding investigations, but as your next state auditor I won't need to keep calling for audits into these equity issues and accountability issues. I will audit and I will investigate these matters of regional equity and much much more on behalf of the working families in our communities because you know as we know we are very forward thinking here in the state of Massachusetts as residents, but our state government continues to be ranked by almost every single good government group as the least transparent and least accessible state government in the entire nation. We are not subject to the public records laws. Our committee votes don't need to be made public. Taxpayer funds go towards non-disclosure agreements to cover up harassment, discrimination, and abuse by powerful politicians. And these types of things are going to continue unless we are able to shine a light in the dark areas of our state government. So as your next state auditor, uh, and actually somebody who was a former house cleaner and a waitress paying my way through college, I can tell you I've learned sunlight really is the best disinfectant. And we might be transparent and accessible as residents, but our state government needs to match that. So I intend to open up state government to everybody so that working families can again have a seat at the table where the decisions are made regarding their lives. I spoke to one of the um, candidates for, for state auditor, and he expressed concern about the budget that is given the auditor's office. Do you think that the budget that they're given is adequate for doing exactly what you want to do if you're elected? The budget absolutely needs to be augmented. Look, I'm scrappy. You just heard how I grew up. 17-year-old single mom, housing insecure. I'm a state senator. Look, I still live with housemates because we are in a housing crisis in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I'm a single woman. And I understand the struggles that working families face. You need to be scrappy, right? We need to save. We need to make sure that we are being frugal. And of course, I plan on doing that in the auditor's office and working with whatever is set by the legislature for the auditor's office. But absolutely, we need more funds in the auditor's office because every dollar that goes towards these accountability measures to increase accountability is, you know, sometimes in tenfold can be saved. I think about the Mass Health Program, right? Mass, look, healthcare takes up the vast majority of our budget in the state. I know this from working on the state budget for 10 years. Uh, I'm a senator. And when we go in and we work on that budget, knowing that healthcare takes up the vast majority of our budget, I think about some of the work that the current auditor has done that's been great in looking at Mass Health and actually identifying simple things like even coding 
issues on whether or not a provider is reporting a service as having been done by a nurse or a doctor. Because if they're coded wrong, what happens is there's a different payment that gets attached and associated with each. You get more if you uh, you get more for a reimbursement if the doctor did the service than you do if a nurse provided the service. Now sometimes there are coding errors that are just done because of clerical errors or technological errors, and in you know some cases there's fraud. So the auditor needs to go in and investigate and audit what's happening and make sure that there's not fraud happening and that folks are held accountable, but also that our technology is functioning correctly and that clerical errors are kept to a minimum. And our state auditor did that very well when she actually reported on this during the last few years. And we ended up saving over $20 million annually because of that audit that was done into Mass Health where it was identified where these cost savings could be provided. I think about that, and that program is only a couple of million dollars to run that program in the auditor's office, but look at how much it's saved, over 20 million. So certainly, when you invest in accountability, when you invest in making sure that we are uh, fighting for efficiency and transparency across the board, those efforts are well worth the investment made because the rate of return is so much more than the investment. So we can't afford not to make these investments. So obviously as a member of the legislature, you use this information from the auditor's office to help guide policy. Right. And, and obviously it's very important. Um, I, I think that unfortunately most people in the Commonwealth just are not sure about this. Um, I think that this election is a time for people to really define what Absolutely. the job is and how it, it should be done, so to speak. Right. And look, there are some differences in this race. You spoke with uh, one of my opponents in this race. Look, we have some differences. My opponent's from Brookline. I'm from Methuen. That, that presents a different, you know, uh, vantage point towards the issues that are, you know, regionally impacting us. I come from a disenfranchised community. Uh, my opponent wants to raise the gas tax by 25 cents per gallon. Uh, I want to uh, vote for the fair share amendment as a way to bring in revenue to the state. So there are some differences there uh, that I think, you know, really uh, help to identify uh, the perspectives that we bring to this office. And I hope people will look at those perspectives, take a look at both of us as candidates, and I do hope to earn your support. You'll go to look at my social justice and equity audit plan. It can be found on my website, which is www.dianafora.ma.com. I talk about everything from making sure the auditor's role plays an integral part in diversifying our state contracting, to pay equity, to housing in the Commonwealth, to looking at the mental health crisis and addiction crisis that we're in. Years ago, uh, you know, we knew that in 2013 everybody was talking about the opioid epidemic, but years later, fast forward, uh, you don't hear many people talking about it anymore like it used to be talked about in the press or elsewhere. But we are still in the middle of an opioid uh, epidemic. And I know this to be the case because, look, I come from a family that struggles with addiction. My brave mother came out uh, a while back publicly about her battle with heroin addiction, opioid addiction across the board. During the uh, shutdown, my mother actually um, almost lost her life to an overdose, was significantly depressed. I'm sorry like to hear many, that. Like many, thank you, like many uh, families, you know, our family had struggled and battled with anxiety, depression, the disease of addiction, access to mental health. And even as a senator, I have found it incredibly challenging to find resources for folks like my mom and others in my community who are struggling. I want to use the auditor's office to do work regarding looking at the Department of Mental Health and the Bureau of Substance Addiction Services to see why we are falling short on providing these much needed addiction resources that struggling families, those who are battling with mental health challenges or the d d disease of addiction, so that they can get the access to the treatment that they so need and deserve. We need to invest in prevention and education, we need to invest in treatment and recovery, and we need to invest in reducing the rate of recidivism, which I know Sheriff Kochi has been doing a lot of work on, you know, helping to reduce the rate of recidivism here as well, working with different mental health programs, so on and so forth. But we need to augment these services, and the auditor can play a huge role in not just identifying the shortfalls and the gaps, but then also taking that information and advocating in the state legislature for the passage of needed resources and policies that can assist with what's been identified. And that is something that I have the experience of doing. Standing up on Beacon Hill, speaking truth to power. I've been filing and passing legislation into law for 10 years now, so I know how, how that's done. I can get to work on day one 
implementing my social justice and equity audit plan, but I can't do it without your support, so I do respectfully ask for your vote, and I ask for your vote, friends. My name is Diana DiZoglio, state senator, candidate for state auditor. I'll be on your ballot Tuesday, September 6th, the day after Labor Day. Remember the Italian last name from Methuen? How you doing? And uh, if anybody has any questions, visit my website. You can contact me. My email and my phone number is right on there. And I look forward to hearing from you so soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you coming by.